to continue the mathematical adventures, please welcome first time speaker, Roger Antonson to this stage to talk about the strangeness of infinity from Cantor to Conway. Hi there. <laughs> OK, good. <laughs> OK, good. Hello. <clears throat> so there are a few things in this world, and in particular the world of mathematics, that are as strange, controversial, and hard to think about as infinity. That's a, it's the most odd thing there is. So what is infinity, and what does even infinity mean? It's, well, it's the opposite of the, in, of the finite. And the bounded, it's the unbounded and the never ending. So in this talk, I hope to give you a little bit of um, insight and a taste of this wonderful and very strange world. So there are two heroes in this story. It's uh, Cantor and Conway, and we'll get to those shortly. Cantor! Yes, good. <laughs> now, first of all, a lot of people are a little bit misguided and skeptical to this field of mathematics. So let, you just, let me just tell you what I think it is. First of all, it's about, it's about finding patterns, patterns everywhere. With the pattern, I mean form, structure, some regularity, something that repeats itself somewhere in time or space. It's also about representing them with a language, with symbols, with sound, with a poem, with anything you want, really. It's about making assumptions, and you can really make any assumption you want. And it's about finding the consequences of these assumptions. And so this is science. Thank you. And ultimately, we, we want to, you know, obtain proof. And a mathematical proof is something different. It is a very strange thing, because if you have a proof, you know that it is true. And it's not just true today, here and now. It is true anytime, you know, anywhere. It is ultimately true. So to make this a little bit easier, I will talk about uh, coffee, because I like coffee. Okay, good. So let's start counting. Um, this is one coffee bean, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five. Are you with me? Okay, so here's an assumption for you. We can take the limit, and we can go to the limit, which is infinitely many coffee beans. We gather them all up in a box, and then we make up a symbol, because math is creativity, and we make up a symbol for it. This is a symbol for infinity now. You just have to, you don't have to just follow me on this. And then, comes along with the second assumption. You can always add one more. So this is infinity plus one. And now really you have a choice to make. Either you say, well, well, hold on. This is just infinity now. It's that this is as far as it goes. This, this is infinite. You can't go any further, right? But you are free to do whatever you want in mathematics. You are. So you add one more. And you say, this is more. This is infinity plus one. But you, if you follow that assumption, you get infinity plus two, and infinity plus three, and four, and five. And if you take the limit of that, what do you get? You get another infinity. So you get two infinities, which is perfectly fine. But then you get another one. This is infinity times two plus one, which is perfectly fine. You're free to do whatever you want, but you have to take the consequences. So now you get... Two infinity plus two and three and four and five. And what do you get in the end? You get three. See, this is going well. <laughs> but here comes another coffee bean. <laughs> and what do you do? You keep going. OK, you're, you're catching on. Yeah, this is science. So you get in one infinity, two infinity, three infinity, four infinity, and five infinity. Are you catching on yet? Yeah, we're going to have infinitely many infinities now. And what are we going to do? We're going to make up a symbol for it. <laughs> so this is infinity squared. Infinity times infinity. <laughs> plus one, plus two, plus three, and four, and five. Because we can. And what you see here, what is it? it really, this is infinity squared, which is this thing. And this thing is infinity times two, and this is four. And what you see is the sum of all these things. And it doesn't stop there. You can actually take infinity to the infinite power. Yeah. 
And one more time, you get a tower of two now. And it's a three tower. And you can keep going. And it, this is gonna hurt. But this is an infinite tower of infinities. And you know what? We just made up a name for it. It's called Epsilon Zero. This is true. Look up Epsilon Zero. It's the infinite tower of, it's, this is a very important number in mathematics. It has to do with proof theory. And it's true. This is the kind of the, the number for proof theory. So um, I know you guys like history. So Georg Cantor is the inventor and the discoverer of, Cantor is the discoverer of this. And he saw an amazingly large world of what he called ordinal numbers. He discovered them. No one before Cantor counted beyond infinity. So he actually said infinity plus one before anyone else. <laughs> However, there's a sad side to Cantor's story. He went crazy. <laughs> Not because of this. He was institutionalized several times in his life, first time in 1884. And eventually, he. This is a sad story. He died in a mental hospital in Halle in 1918, and his life was not happy. I'm sorry to break it to you. It may sound funny, but he had a sad life. One of the reasons it might be, we don't know why he meant, went insane. This is a picture of him um, when he was younger, 1870. In 1874, he published a paper uh, about uh, infinity, and it wasn't accepted. In particular, it was one mathematician and several others at, at the time um, that didn't accept his results. Um, Kronecker, in particular, um, he is famous for the quote, um, you know, God made the integers, all else is the work of man. He actually attacked Cantor viciously and hard for all his results, and it was very hard for Cantor to do his work. He said, you know, he's a corrupter of the youth. And he said, you know, teaching his ideas to younger generation of mathematicians, mathematicians is, is not good. However, Cantor was right. We accept today his proofs and we teach it to young students of mathematics. And I love this quote by Cantor. It says, the essence of mathematics lies in its freedom. You are free to do whatever you want. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about the, the other side of Cantor's work, which was really controversial. So David Hilbert was a German mathematician, and he defended Cantor and bravely, and, and he was extremely influential, um, Hilbert was, and he supported Cantor. So uh, Hilbert is known for his 23 problems, and the first problem has to do with Cantor's work. So let me tell you a story about Hilbert's Hotel. So Hilbert's Hotel is a standard story for talking about larger infinities. Right, so this is a hotel, it's full, it's full of people, you know, it, it ha but it has infinitely many rooms, and the rooms are numbered, right? They're numbered from, from one to infinity, so one, two, three, four, each room is occupied. So here comes a new guest, and he says, I want a room, you know? And, it, and the person says, there's no room, it's full. Uh, it's infinitely many rooms. Oh, but the visitor is very clever. He says, well, why don't you scoot everybody up like this? And there's room for me right there. <laughs> and it's true. It works. And here comes another one. And there's room because you just scoot everybody up. And then there's room for this one. Now here's the problem. Here comes an, a bus of infinitely many new guests. <laughs> it's like, and the person at the hotel is like, uh-oh, oh, this is not going to work. But however, it does work. Because you move person one to room number two, you move person two to room number four, you move person three to new room number six. So every person goes to twice the room number. It looks like this. You just scale everything up. And then what do you do? You just move everybody in. <laughs> and it works. It really does. <laughs> now here's a problem. If there comes a really big bus, this is called the real bus, because it has all the real numbers in it. <laughs> yeah. There, there are no more rules. There are no more room for them. Okay, so um, qu very quickly, if, if you have the set of even numbers, and if you have the set of natural numbers, you can make a one-to-one -one correspondence with them. This is what Cantor discovered. And he said, you know, it might sound like there are more natural numbers than even numbers, but really they're the same. Because there's a one-to-one -one correspondence, they have the same cardinality. Georg Cantor defined cardinality in this way. So he said the set of even numbers is countable. And he called this Aleph zero. 
And if you take the real numbers, we know them, you know, and this is where we have e, pi, square root of two, all these things. And if you do this, there is no one-to-one -one correspondence. They do not have the same cardinality. There are m strictly more real numbers than there are natural numbers. We say that the real numbers are not countable. This is the stuff that Cantor was, um, you know, the controversy was about. So now you've seen two things. You've seen ordinal numbers. They represent positions in ordering. And the math looks like that, if you want to see it. Is this where you shout science? I think it is. I would love to talk about that, but I can't. And on the other side, it was cardinal numbers. They represent sizes of sets. And that looks like that. And there's some stuff here about this fellow, Kurt Gödel. He was actually in San Francisco in 1940. Yes, I know. Unfortunately, uh, life is not long enough to tell you everything. So that, wa that was actually a quote by John Horton Conway. He was born in 1937. He's still alive. I met him four years ago. He's an amazing man. And this is what he really looks like. And he's most known for his game of life. However, what he's most proud of is not that. So let's just look at Conway to get a little picture of him. Here he is. You know, people think that mathematics is complicated. Mathematics is the simple bit. It's the stuff we can understand. It's cats that are complicated. I mean, what is it in those little molecules and stuff that make up make one cat behave differently to another or that make a cat? You know, how do you define a cat? I have no idea. <laughs> Science. John Conway discovered the surreal numbers, and the surreal numbers is a set of numbers so great it's very hard to imagine. But every number, every surreal number, corresponds to, a, to two sets of previously created numbers. You have a left set and a right set, and nothing on the left is greater than or equal to anything on the right. So bear with me. What is zero? Zero is the simplest thing there is. So what is one? One is the simplest thing greater than zero. What is negative zero? Negative zero is the simplest thing smaller than zero. Now, what do you think is the greater, greatest things greater, no, the simplest thing greater than one? Well, it's two. And what is the simplest number between zero and one? It's a half. What is the simplest number between zero and a half? It's a quarter, right? It makes sense. And in this way, he defined everything. He defined what is the simplest number greater than every number. Well, it's the infinite. It's omega. What is the simplest number greater than omega? It's omega plus one. <laughs> and now here comes the cool stuff. What is the simplest number between omega and all the natural numbers? It's omega minus one. And Cant Cantor started this, but Conway really continued it. And he saw what no one else has ever seen. Now we see it because of him, but nobody had seen it. And you can keep this going. If you look at this number, what it turns out to be is half of infinity. It's omega divided by 2. And you can take the square root of infinity, and you can take 1 over infinity. And it makes sense. And John Conway actually discovered this. And this is kind of what it looks like. If you look it up, you'll find visualizations like this. I'm happy. It is art. It's amazing art. I mean, it, it's mathematics and science at the same time. John Conway wrote a beautiful book. In 1976, it was published, and it's called On Numbers and Games. But the word surreal didn't come from John Conway. It came from Don Knuth, who is a local. He was born in 1938, the year after Conway. I'm happy that you're applauding. This is one of my all-time heroes, and I got to meet him. I'm so happy. <laughs> This is two years ago um, at his annual Christmas lecture. And he wrote a book called Surreal Numbers while on sabbatical leave in Oslo, where I live, in Norway, in 1973. He had met Conway the, way, the year before and heard about surreal numbers, and he came up with the term surreal numbers. And if you're curious about all this, read this book. It's called Genius at Play. It's by Shubin Roberts. It was published in 2015, and it's a wonderful, wonderful book about a living legend that I think we all should toast and be happy is here and alive. So thank you.